The end of another calendar year approaches, and I'd like to take a moment to thank you for being a listener. And thanks as well to my guest for making this past year so special. Thanks to your continued support of the Cannabis Podcast and our advertisers, we can keep doing our part to normalize cannabis by sharing the uncensored truth with the world. I'm honored that you choose to spend time with me each episode, and I hope you get to spend some time with family and friends sharing good times together. I hope you enjoy the season, one toke at a time. From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. Now, here's your host and bud tender, Gary Johnston. Welcome back once more to the Cannabis Podcast. If this is your first time, well, an especially warm welcome for you. I think in the next 30, 40 minutes or so, you're going to find a whole bunch of cannabis information. Before we get started, let me remind you this program is intended only for those 19 or older in your jurisdiction and is intended purely for entertainment purposes. You should always consume your cannabis responsibly. In this episode, we're going to look at some extravagant gifts since Christmas is on the way. Extravagant gifts for the canisseur on your list. Leafly picked the cultivar of the year. We'll talk about that. I talk with Bella Mitchell, who built the Concentrates brand Royalty. And that brand is actually up for the brand of the year in the AdCan Awards. Great conversation with Bella. Plus, we ask if there's learning for other countries with the Canada medical marijuana fiasco, how that has deteriorated over the last few years. And on Cultivar Corner, Penticton's Pure Fire erupts with Bubba Purple Punsicle. Mm -mm. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? All of that and more on episode 112 of the Cannabis Podcast. And let me send a quick note of thanks to Gord for contacting me through info at CannabisPodcast.com. Had some interesting things to say and finished the, <laughs> the little message with again that whole point of, yes, we do, I still am worried about the importance of protecting my identity and so did not want his name to use other than Gord. <laughs> I won't even say what part of the country Gord lives in, so we should be pretty safe there. <laughs> Thanks for the comment, Gord, though. I do appreciate it, and I'll dive into a bit of what you talked about uh, in, perhaps in a future episode. And before we get too far into the episode, let me share a bit of personal news from the world of the Cannabis Podcast. I mentioned in the last episode, I thanked a couple of people right at the beginning, my son Ian and his wife Christine, for all the help they've given me in building the podcast. And I'm really pleased to tell you that they are now going to have a baby. Yes, we have our third grandchild on our way. Christine and Ian expecting sometime in June next year. So happy for the news. So happy to share it and so happy to have them living with us here so we can share in the joy as this little grandchild grows. I had to share that news with you. So let's dive into our first story of the day. And this is back to my friend David Wiley and the OkanaganZ.com. So whether you're looking for a conversation piece or to add class to your smoking ritual, here are 10 designer accessories handpicked by the folks at Herbature.com. Shine 24K Gold Papers. If you love gold, why don't you treat yourself to this 24-karat gold king-size rolling paper? It combines edible gold leaf with a hemp base. The gold stays on the ashes, making your ashtray sparkle. <laughs> Thirteen dollars for one of those. Marley Natural Walnut Wood Water Pipe. Crafted from sustainably sourced black walnut wood, this hand-blown borous silicate glass water pipe makes for a smooth experience. This Marley pipe looks beautiful on display, and it's only $239. <laughs> Pulsar Rock Concentrate Vaporizer. You can use concentrates and flour in this premium two-in-one electric rig. It includes a coilless quartz cup atomizer for flavorful dabs and a coilless ceramic cup for bud. That's only $269. Herbature times Pure Pipes, the Manhattan. These handmade pipes are each carved from high-quality olive wood that can be up to 1,000 years old by a German pipe-making artisan. Beautiful-looking pipe at $179. Stupenda Glass Gravity Pipe V2. Always been curious about the gravity pipes. One of these days I'm going to try it, although I know I would have to take the hose away from my mouth as it started to push it. It would make me cough like crazy. The world's first gravity-powered contactless water pipe uses kinetic motion activation, cascading water, and opposing airflow technology. 
No battery or motor is required, just a 180 degree rotation. And that's only $549. And then there is the Volcano Special Edition Gold version. This eye-catching Volcano has a 24 karat gold finish. One of the best vapor experiences available, the German-engineered Volcano fills a balloon with vapor that can be stored for up to eight hours. $799 your price on that one, and I can't believe that that balloon can be stored for up to eight hours. I think that would feel a little harsh after that much time. The Keith Haring Water Pipe. Legendary pop artist Keith Haring's graffiti-influenced work adorns these water pipes. The artwork is showcased on the neck and base for $199. And how about an executive grinder? Milled from a solid aluminum block, this durable four-piece grinder shreds herb at an even consistency. It's an essential tool for any smoker with a layer that catches key for later use. $89 for that grinder. And the Marley Natural Crystal Ashtray. A luxurious ashtray crafted from clear crystal and walnut wood then finished off with a convenient metal poker for ash removal. The felt-lined base won't scratch your table. Its wind-resistant design makes it great for smoking outdoors, and it's only $89 for the ashtray. And then there's the Riot Walnut Rolling Tray. Handcrafted from a solid piece of walnut wood and finished with linseed oil for a rich finish, this rolling tray looks lovely on a table. The rounded lower edge makes it easy to scoop herbs into paper and bowls. $69. Some great suggestions there, kind of from two sources, the OkanaganZ.com and picking up that story from, where was it, Herbature.com. And quite frankly, as a cannabis connoisseur, I would like any one of those gifts, if anybody's listening. It doesn't matter how high the THC is. The entourage effect is always waiting for you here. This is the Cannabis Podcast. Today, I'm having a conversation with Bella Mitchell, Director of Marketing for Canmart. But Bella is not here to talk about Canmart. She's here to talk about the brand she built from the ground up, Royalty, R-O-I-L-T-Y. Now, let me also let you know that Royalty is up for the LP Brand of the Year this year in the Ad Can Awards, and Bella is up for the Best Canadian Cannabis Brand Marketer in 2022. And Bella is my guest. We pick up the conversation just after I've welcomed her to the Cannabis Podcast. Thanks for having me, Gary. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm so pleased we finally managed to get it all together and we get you (laughs) on the other end of the line. So before we dive into the royalty side of things, Bella, give me a sense of what your background is in cannabis. What brought you to this industry? So I actually used to be in wine and alcohol. Um, for many, many years. And I really, really loved it. Um, But once cannabis was legalized, it just felt like an opportunity for a young woman to really jump into. You know, wine is an amazing world, but it's very established and very hard, uh, very tough nut to crack. As an entrepreneur myself, I just, I really saw an opportunity to be a part of something that was from the ground up. So I came into cannabis in 2019 uh, I've worked for Oxley and Indiva and then have rounded myself out here at Canmart. Um, and it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. It's been, yeah, I guess just over three years and uh, it's crazy. It's been, It feels like it's been so long and yet somehow so short. <laughs> Absolutely. And do you have a personal cannabis story, Bella, that, that brought you into the industry? My parents are going to hate me. I'm not going to share this podcast with them, but I have definitely, I've been smoking weed since I was very, very young probably about 15 or 16 years old. Um, So it's always been a part of my life. And I think it was just, what what always drew drew me back to it was also just the sense of community. And, you know, I just, it never made sense to me that there was so much stigma and issue around it. So um, again, then, you know, legalization happened and it just felt like the right, the right direction for me to go considering that little teenage stoner me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and we've all kind of, you know, had our own journey and we all came here from different paths. But but as you say, it's the community that, that really makes us stronger, isn't it? Exactly. So how have things been for you since you made the made the move over to Canmart and with the royalty line? What have you been up to? Canmart has been amazing. Uh, royalty is our concentrate brand. We launched in about June of July, 2021. That's right when I started. And I have just built the, the brand from the ground up. I, I joined the team and it was really, we're, we're a team of entrepreneurs for sure. Uh, it's got that startup vibe. And uh, I started with literally just a logo and an idea for a concentrate brand, which to me was like, 
just ugh, my bread and butter. I love brand building. It's so it's so much fun. So I was so excited to just really get my hands dirty. Um, so we built the brand, you know, for me, I wanted in my own sense of community and cannabis is really how I built the brand. Um, and a lot of the people at Camart, you know, we're all legacy people. We all have experience either in the legacy market or just we've been stoners forever. So, you know, that was kind of where the brand, the love of the brand came from. It was like, let's build a concentrate brand that is about community. Um, and that's where, you know, we kind of pride ourselves on this sort of like legacy hearts and legacy hands. And it, it's that's been just really pushed into the brand and try to you know, breathe community, uh, especially with concentrates, right? It's it's such a passionate consumer in concentrates that they really are the community. Um, so it, it was super challenging, but so much fun to build this brand out. And, you know, I had such an amazing team at Camart producing the products and getting everything out of our lab, out of Etobicoke. So it's just been, it's been really fun. And I've had so much support from the product development side as well as our sales side. It's It's been a journey. Um, when we launched, we had about two SKUs. We started in BC, uh, sorry, not BC, Alberta, with two SKUs, uh, two vape SKUs, which wasn't even our bread and butter. It wasn't our concentrates, but it was our foot in the door. And as of today, we have about over 22 live SKUs um, across Canada. So we've just blown up in the past year. Yeah, you certainly have. I've I've got your website up, and and I'm kind of scrolling through it as you're as you're speaking. And there are a lot of different options that, that you've yes. got. Yes. <laughs> What's the focus of royalty? What, what what makes you different than than the other companies that are out there, Bella? I think what makes us different it, again, and I'm just going to harp on community, but I think what so many of these big LPs and these big companies are missing is that what like cannabis is community. It's not about a fast moving consumer product, right? That's not that's not going to speak to your consumers because those aren't who your consumers are. Maybe maybe in the edible space, that's definitely a bit more of the consumer packaged good vibe. But with dried flour and concentrates, it's so much about community. And really, what we're trying to do with royalty is quality concentrates in Canada should be a prerequisite. It shouldn't be a brand premium. You shouldn't be paying for a quality concentrate because concentrates should just be quality, right? That should be the, the bare minimum is that they are good quality. And that's they're, they're refined. That's what they should be. So that's really what we're trying to you know push and set apart from us is that there's a lot of people charging more than they should be. And again, it's difficult. You know, we're up against excise taxes and all of the issues that go into what we're paying for. But we really are trying to appeal to the illicit market, be like, you know, we are creating quality products come by from the legal market. You know, it's safe. You know, it's it's high quality. And that's what we're trying to do with our price points as well. Nice. And what was the process selection in, in choosing all the various SKUs that, that you've got? That must have been a bit of a journey as well. I wish our director of product was here. <laughs> he could re- he could really dig into it. Um, he comes from legacy. His his really viewpoint on it was um, bringing well known strains to the market, uh, exciting strains to the market, and we try to really you know revolve our strains and keep things moving and keep keep things interesting. But our focus was always on live resin. That's like that was our bread and butter. That's where we really wanted to dig in. My viewpoint from the marketing side is I feel like live resin is, is a very easy product to sell. Uh, you know, it's not crazy high potency. So for anybody kind of venturing over into concentrates, it's such a soft place to land literally and figuratively, you know, live resin is, is our bread and butter. And we think we have about oh, seven or eight SKUs within live resin across Canada now as well. So that was what we really wanted to flesh out. But of course we're creating we're creating what the illicit market is used to, right? So we have our shatters, uh, we have our sugar wax, we're leaning into some diamonds and sauce as well. And just just really trying to bring to the legal market what's happening in the illicit market at a proper price. That's a good philosophy. I like, I like yeah. the approach that you're taking and again, with that. It's, it's, it's this, these are our legacy people. We know where we came from. We know what we need to do. So we're not trying to press press too much on the consumer packaged good sides of things. We're just trying to continue to be the community that we all came from. Absolutely. That's very cool. So the team that you've got uh, working on you where, are you, where are you guys located? So we have our lab out of Etobicoke, um, and that's where all of our ops and QA and everybody work out of. But 
Canmart, our, our other, other people, <laughs> we are all remote, which is pretty amazing. So we have our whole team is literally across Canada, which is really fun and fun to work with time zone changes. <laughs> but COVID, it's been so great to just sort of open everything up and not be restricted by where someone might live to have the best people on your team. Yeah, absolutely. And how is distribution for you right now? What do Are you in all the provinces or is it uh, somewhat limited right now? We are in absolutely every province except for a few over, I don't think we're in Nova Scotia yet, uh, and potentially Newfoundland, but we are in BC, Alberta, across the prairies, Ontario, the, the uh, Nunavut up in Northwest Territories and everything. So we have definitely expanded and pressed and pushed and gotten our way in. Nice. And I bet that's been a bit of a journey as well. It absolutely has been. <laughs> uh, it's been, I mean, Alberta's been wonderful to us. They've been very welcoming and it's been really great to expand in that, in that province. Ontario was definitely a bit tougher, but we've, we've got our, we have some vapes in there and a live resin that came out this, um, just past summer. Uh, and actually we just launched a first to market, uh, nobody's doing this yet, a duo pack of Shatter in Ontario as well. Oh, so a half Grammy? Exactly. So nice. it's nice because, you know, like, I don't know, people like more than one thing. So we wanted to open that up. And uh, the OCS has also picked up a duo pack of vapes from us as well. So we're hoping, I think, also to get a live resin through. So we're, we're kind of pushing like variety as well. And that really speaks to what we want to do, too, because like people don't want to buy the same chatter all the time it's fun to have that variety and that choice the whole point of enjoying our cannabis is that our exactly. receptors need to be woken up once in a while with something exactly. new exactly totally yeah. yeah absolutely so i totally get that so as i'm scrolling through the website and uh, there's a, a number of them that are really appealing to me like the royalty <laughs> live resin the squire skunk squire skunk Skunky, earthy grassy yeah that's in manitoba and saskatchewan right now um, so part of the fun of this brand, you know, the name in itself is a pun, royalty is a pun, and this sort of leans back again. I'm just harking on community, but it's it's important. Um, the cannabis community and like the legacy market loves puns. Puns are everything. <laughs> <laughs> like again, we're we're supposed to be having fun. It's cannabis, right? So when I got to just sort of flesh out without it was it was no holds barred my you know my ceo was just like have fun like he trusted me to really build this out and have fun with it so all of our names are puns from the original source so we have catacomb kush and the input strain is death bubba we have the mountain kush and the input strain is afghani kush so we we try to take the, you know, the intention, the OG strain and do it justice with a fun pun that ties into the royalty name uh, to keep it fun and keep people laughing. Like we have our mm -hmm. vape, our vape, one of our vapes is Royal Canadian Mint, which I am just shocked Health Canada was approved and didn't mind. But like, that was one of my favorites. I was like, oh my God, are they going to say yes? And they absolutely <laughs> said yes. And that's like, it, it makes people smirk. And I think that's what's so important and so fun about it. Well, I think that's why the name becomes memorable because it, exactly. it, it creates that spark, that synapse in your brain that connects you there. So what about Her Majesty's Melons? What's the input on that one? Uh, that is Melon OG. Oh, nice. Which is nice. so funny. The timing the timing release of that was right around when the Queen passed away. So that was a uh, oh, fun timing. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, you may have even reconsidered perhaps waiting a bit before we were like oh we had no we couldn't even control the time of the release of it we're like oh yeah <laughs> you know what but people seem to really th again and it's like the community is about being you know having fun so yeah. luckily people took it in stride and find it funny and that's what we're trying to be very tongue-in-cheek and get people you know smiling yeah, absolutely. And and we all need that. We all need exactly. to have a bit more fun and, and frivolity in our life. Excellent. When I came into like cannabis and even coming from wine, it's like these shouldn't be serious industries. These should be we should be having fun. We're not this isn't finance. We should have some fun. <laughs> and then I guess that's the one thing that I never worked in the in the liquor industry. Um cannabis is the only one that I've been in. And I think the thing that I find most unique is that, I mean, we started off our conversation with me asking you what your cannabis experience was, because I assume you have some because you're in the industry. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did, did that apply? I guess it's a strange question. Were, were people heavily into alcohol who were in the alcohol oh, industry? Oh, yeah. Did, did they, they have were. the same conversation? <laughs> yeah, we were. We all okay. were. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess, I guess that totally makes sense. It it's, that's one of the things could... I just find fascinating about this industry that, you know, people like you and I can sit down and, and within five minutes, we can have a deep conversation about about some weed that we had once before and it just, <laughs> it sticks with you. It's, it's fabulous. Absolutely. I found it a little interesting because, you know, when legalization happened, a lot of companies were borrowing from alcohol and Bev, right? Because it's comparable mm-hmm. regulated uh, industry. Um, so I was a little shocked some places I worked where people like did not consume cannabis. And I was like, oh, then mm-hmm. why, why are you here? Like, because in, in wine <laughs> and alcohol, like, I don't know anyone who didn't drink, you know, it was, it was a bit of a, a bit of a strange crossover, yeah, but yeah. I think, I think more people now are definitely consumers than, than uh, when we started. <laughs> so do you have any favorites in the current product line, Bella? Oh, that's like picking a favorite child, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> Uh, I'm very partial to our King's Kush Live Resin, which is available in most provinces. Um, I love Royal Canadian Mint, our vape, because I love a good menthol vape. I can't can't say no to one. Uh, oh, a menthol vape. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's got that nice little, you know, fresh, fresh vibe to it. Uh, we have uh, also... Uh, you said Squire's Tongue. That's a really good one as well. Um, we just retired a Royal Lemon Haze, which was delicious. Um, I, honestly, any of our live resins, I'm just, I'm so into. The flavors, the terpenes, like it's, that's that's my favorite place to be. Um, our shatters are fantastic, but for me, I'm such, like, I love the flavor. I think it's because I come from wine. So for me, terpenes are that, like, kind of comparison. Sure. Um, yeah, it's the flavor that matters the most. Yeah, and, like, I yeah. love being able to pull under undertones and like be able to compare it to the world that I, that, you know, I came from wine. Right. So it's, I find live yeah. resin is really like kind of that little in between where I can taste it and really smell it. And like, there's some live resins that I'll smell and I'm like, Oh, this smells like a Pinot Grigio. Like it's such a direct yeah. correlation. Um, so I think that's, I find that's, you know, kind of our sweet spot. And for a yeah. lot of people it is, you know, you get that flavor and that smell combination and, Shatter is great. Diamonds are great. They're super high potency. You're going to get ripped. But I like I like the flavor component. I'm not just doing it to get blitzed out of my mind, right? <laughs> yeah. So heavily into concentrates for royalty now, um, do you plan to move out into other areas? So we might be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I caught we, that might be. <laughs> we might be. Uh, we really wanted to get our, you know, a stronghold on our concentrates and producing out of our labs and really get ourselves developed first. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not a huge priority for us. It's, it's, you know, it's a bloodbath in dried flour. Um, oh, absolutely. It is. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we're really pride ourselves on doing concentrates very, very well. Having said that, you know, we obviously procure some very great flour to put into our concentrates so you've got to have input Mm -hmm. exactly it's not it's not outside of our realm um so it's something we might be considering uh we'll we'll see how things go (laughs) well it sounds like you've you've established the product line uh, with a pretty good balance at this point and a nice array of products you got where do you see yourself and and royalty heading as we move into 2023 bella I think as we move forward, we're going to really try to lean into some more innovation coming out. And, you know, it, it's tough within the regulations. They're very clear on what we can and can't do with, you know, multi-packs, as for example. The shatter one, you know, it, it's it's a new one. Nobody's doing it yet. We want to really lean into duo packs. We want to lean into offering variety especially during the holidays. There's these advent calendars and it's, it's so unfair that a pre-roll company can put out, you know, 24 J's for the Christmas when we can't do much with our concentrates, right? So it, it'll be interesting to see how regulations loosen over the years and where we can really go with that. I think variety is going to be a big one for us, knowing that we already have a few duo packs in the pipeline that are coming out. That's going to be important to us. That's going to be, you know, we're going to look at what's doing the best and also you know, what are some new fun strains and start playing around and offering, you know, our best selling with something brand new. Uh, that's really where we're going to try and push. We have like the duo pack that's coming out in the OCS is two new vapes, um, or vape, one, our duo vape uh, is two new vapes to the OCS. So 
there are vapes that are available in other provinces, but not in the OCS. So, you know, we're going to try and push and play with this duo pack idea as well. And, you know, it's a great way for consumers to try more than one thing, as you know, it sure is, and yeah. it helps us, you know, have those conversations with the board about our products are good. People really like us. Give us the opportunity. Keep keep letting us push and push. And, you know, the boards have been very receptive. Once we get in and they see that we're selling and people really are enjoying our products, it's it's obviously a, a lot easier. But I think, yeah, we're going to be leaning into some more innovation and offering variety. I really like the idea of the, the dual pack for the shatter. I think that's just brilliant. That's That's been a long time coming. I'm glad to see somebody's coming to the table with that. Yeah, people have been going bananas on social media with it too, which is fantastic. Uh, lots of lots of good feedback. Lots of people very excited about it. That was a fun one to bring bring to light for sure. Yeah, very cool. Well, let me finish with my hot seat questions, if you don't mind, Bella. Absolutely. Let's start with an easy one. Your favorite cultivar? Oh my goodness. Um, anything haze, honestly, any sativa haze. Okay, nice. I, I, yeah, I there's can't. There's a lot pick of people a... who love hazes. I just, I love a good haze. Royal lemon haze, you can't hate on. Uh, anything okay. haze, anything sativa. I really, I'm not an indica person. It's not my thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, many people aren't. I totally I get like that. People are like either really into it or just totally against it. I, <laughs> I'm a sativa <laughs> person through and through. I feel like I still need yeah. to be able to function and sativa helps me do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then many people feel the same way, myself included. <laughs> are you sativa too? Oh. Uh, I'm I'm actually one of those rare people. I do I smoke sativa. I smoke nice. sativa daytime, nice. and I smoke indica nighttime. It's yeah. uh, I I almost have a, like a, a cutoff, and, and it's kind of like eight eight o'clock at night. It's kind of my amazing. And then okay, let's move to the sativas. Let's go to the indica <laughs> now. So yeah, that's just how I am. Perfect. <laughs> um, joints or vape? Ooh, both. <laughs> I can't okay. I can't pick one. If it's winter vape, <laughs> uh, okay. summer okay. joint. But, sure, makes sense. But you know, I love the ritual of rolling a joint. I can't, I can't. Was, you know what? Joint, joint wins. It wins. And isn't that so much of, of our cannabis world? That ritual of, of, as you say, rolling the joint, and just it's, it's so much of our world. It very much is. And like, you know, it's it's cold here in the winter. I don't want to be standing outside smoking a joint. <laughs> um, but yeah, I find that the, you know, if I'm gonna yeah get down to it, it's the ritual of a joint versus. A vape, it's so easy. Like, and I can just sit there and get way too high, way too quickly on the vape. <laughs> <laughs> there is that too. Um, okay, edibles or flour? Flour. Flour, um, no question at all. No question at all. I do. I, I don't fuck with edibles. <laughs> yeah, they they don't do much for me. I, well, from my perspective, they just don't they don't get me off. So that's why I don't do much on yeah, the edibles. Yeah, for me, I I mean. I feel like everybody, everybody who did edibles as a teenager had a terrible experience with that. <laughs> and that lives with you today. <laughs> <laughs> it sticks with you. Yeah, 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 it does. I think it's kind of like, I find them too much like an indica for me. It's too much of like a down. Okay, um, yeah. Flower sativa, and that's my, that's my jam. <laughs> flower is the way to go. Well, excellent. It's been a great conversation, Bella. Thank you so much for the conversation. Thanks so and, much, Gary. Any uh, final words for from you in regards to royalty and what your future is? Um, I would just say keep your eyes on us. We're small but mighty. You know, we're not one of the big LPs, but we have a lot of tricks up our sleeve. Um, twenty twenty three is going to be a big year for us. You know, we've expanded. My marketing team has expanded, and we have some big big plans in place to really push the products and push the brand and get people excited and realize again that like. You don't need to be paying a brand premium for concentrates. You should be paying what they're worth. And that's that's it. <laughs> Excellent. Those are some great words to finish with. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Bella. You enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you so much, Gary. From Studio High Above the Clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. And just ahead of Cultivar Corner, let's hit a story from Leafly.ca, which is actually a story from the OkanaganZ.com. <laughs> We're combining them all up here. Jealousy named Leafly's strain of the year. Jealousy is the strain of the year, according to Leafly. The hybrid strain was first introduced in 2019 and has become increasingly popular among growers and consumers. The strain was made by cannabis breeder Seed Junkie Genetics. It's a cross of sherbet and gelato. It was first brought to you, the market in 2019 by The Mints, a cookies and seed junkie genetics collaboration brand. It took the influential Southern California market by storm. 
and this is the fifth year Leafly has chosen a top strain. David Downs, Leafly's California bureau chief, says purple-colored weed is trending right now, and Jealousy's flower is dark purple all the way to black with dapples of bright green. Cannabis breeders constantly create new strains to meet evolving consumer trends and future demand. Jealousy's waves continue to reverberate. More than a dozen new notable strains cross with Jealousy capitalize on its lineage and prestige, says Downs in a statement. The terpene caryophylline dominates Jealousy, giving it a spicy aroma. Reviews on Leafly say Jealousy tastes earthy and funky and brings a sense of relaxation to everyday activities. Leafly says advertisers cannot buy the strain of the year. Rather, Leafly's award-winning experts follow emerging strains, analyzing year-over-year changes in strain page views, growth in menu availability, and orders placed, it says. Other deciding factors include how new or unique a strain is, as well as its pedigree. Leafly's team scrutinizes the breeder, the strain's effect, where it fits into the market, and how widely available it is in adult use states. Well, of course, we're also interested in how that applies to the Canadian market. (laughs) And in the Canadian market, we know that Black Market has a jealousy cultivar. And we may just have to add that to Cultivar Corner for next year and get our own opinion of how jealousy is in terms of a strain of the year. THC, CBD, terpene profiles, what's in me? Oh, please explain to me. Cultivar Corner. On Cultivar Corner today, we're coming back to BC. We're coming back to one of the members of the BC Black family. And this is Purifier. They grow in Penticton. And this is Purifier's Bubble Purple Punchicle. <laughs> What's the uh, heritage of this guy? The lineage comes from Death Bubba. And purple punchicle. THC sitting at 25.1%. Nice moderate THC amount. And as I pop the bag, oh, it smells like candy. It smells just like candy, which might be an indication. And yeah, turn it over and guess what? Total terpenes are sitting at 2.22%. And farnesine is the most prominent terpene. And for me, Farnesine is always where those candy kind of sweet smells come from. Mmm, that is very, very sweet. Just smells like candy. Farnesine at 0.57%, limonene at 0.50%, and beta myrcene at 0.42%. Definitely an indica leaning hybrid. And uh, interesting fact, as I look at what's available on the web, and I go to purifierco.ca, which is, of course, the parent company of Purifier, and their web presence, and guess what? The terpenes listed are different. (laughs) This is partly what makes this confusing for us as consumers. Which source am I supposed to believe? So here on my package, again, the lineage is Death Baba plus Purple Punchicle, Total terpenes 2.22, as I said before, farnesine 0.57, limonene 0.50, and beta myrcene 0.42. Well, I go to the web and I pull up Bubba Purple Punchicle, Death Bubba and Purple Punchicle, it says THC ranging from 24 to 28%, terpenes from 2 to 3%, and dominant terpenes, limonene, myrcene, beta caryophylline. <laughs> Uh, On my package, there is no beta caryophylline, and on the web, there is no farnesine. And definitely, from the smell of it, there's got to be some farnesine in here. There's such sweet notes. Mmm. Well, regardless of that, I guess, let me get the Crafty Plus started. I have the joint already rolled. Bubba Purple Punchicle. Definitely a heavy indica with Death Bubba as one of its parent lineages. Packaged fairly fresh. This was packaged in September, September 27th. So actually, I guess about two months ago, which these days seems to be a fairly long time, but it's fairly fresh. Let's talk about the buds. Really nicely cured. Let me pull out the jeweler's loop and see what kind of trichome fields we have waiting in this particular weed. Uh, Really a beautiful aroma, just really, really fruity. I just, I can't believe how much fruitiness there is to it. And get the jeweler's loop in there. I expected it to have a, 
covering of trichomes, but... I mean, there's lots of trichomes in here, but I would not call the buds frosty, because to the naked eye, they don't look a lot frosty. As I pull up the jeweler's loop deep inside, I can see all kinds of trichomes, but not a whole lot resting on the surface. The cure looks pretty nice as I pulled those buds apart to roll the joint and to get the vaporizer ready. Mmm, so much more of that candy fruitiness comes out. Really nicely cured. I did not actually have to pull out my grinder. I was able to pull the butt apart and just gently with my fingers roll that into a space where it was good for putting into the joints and into the vaporizer, and I always like that. It shows a nice, some, some nice care and some nice cure. So do we have a story from the folks? Yes, we do. Unique cultivars and premium smoke. This is Pure Fire Co. Unique Ultra high quality flour and rare genetics are our bread and butter. Many of our strains have been developed in house for over 40 years and are not available anywhere else. Our passion for breeding continues to this day as we are always searching for new and exciting genetics. Our extensive library includes cultivars with strong terpenes and rare profiles, and we're both excited and proud to share them with you. And not only do they, of course, have the Bubba Purple Punchicle, they have a Black Truffle, they have a Tropicana, a Shockwave. And those are the main cultivars they're going with now. And we are talking about the Bubba Purple Punchicle. And in fact, I think it's time we have a taste of the Bubba Purple Punchicle. And here we go. Now again, once I popped those buds with my fingers, the fruitiness really came to the fore. And, and I am just amazed at the... It, it's like a... It's like a cream berry pie or something I'm sticking my nose into there. Really, really love the smell of that. Really nice and sweet. The smoke, nice and smooth. Let's take a look at what the ash is doing. That's coming off nice and white. And drops off very nicely. And now, since the crafty is ready, let's see what Bubba Purple Punchicle really tastes like. Oh, wow. Oh, so much more of that fruity nature comes through. Now, they're not giving me an indication. Well, yes, they are. I guess musty, peppery, dank flavors and paired with sweet berry notes. Those sweet berry notes are just going flying through. Not so much in the joint, but definitely on the vaporizer. And at 25.41% THC, I expected to have a decent hit on me, and here they come. I always love that, just as I bring up the concept of, am I feeling anything for this? And then suddenly I start to feel those happy eyes coming to the fore. Not, not really deep in the happy eyes, but getting a little stronger as each passing minute goes by. Refire the joint. And by the way, just so we have some method of comparison, when I'm rolling a joint, I'm using about a half a gram in, in all of my joints. Decent for one person, probably good for a couple of people. <laughs> and I, I think I do roll a pretty good straight joint. I'd never use filters. My joints never have filters in them. I've never gotten into that yet, and I probably still won't. Yes, it's a bit of a pain having some roaches, and perhaps I'm throwing away more weed than I should. I don't have to worry about that with a Crafty Plus, though. Oh, I just love when I'm in the midst of doing a cultivar corner, hoping for a nice little buzz to finish off this segment and to get through the rest of what I have to do today. Indica leaning, so not only am I feeling those happy eyes, but I'm already kind of getting some of that nice body relaxation. My shoulders kind of let down a little bit. Feel a couple of rushes head up my spine. <laughs> I just love the whole the whole process of cannabis, the ritual of getting it ready, the ritual of actually consuming it, and then the the satisfied ritual of reaching fruition and realizing that now I have a I have a feeling that's gonna enhance the next few things I do today. Mm mm. Liking the taste. The high's coming on really nicely. 
<sighs> yeah. Definitely leaning to that indica. I'm not, I'm not feeling like I want to go do a whole bunch of stuff. I don't feel quite so inspired in that regard, but I'm feeling that I'm going to be doing a whole lot of things that could just involve sitting back and chilling for the next couple hours. Liking the feeling of it so far. So we got a cross of Death Bubba and Purple Punchicle. And that brings us to a product called Pure Fire Bubba Purple Punchicle. THC 25.41%. Terpenes, total terpenes 2.22%. I'm getting some differing results of what terpenes are supposed to be in this. If we read the package that I have in my hands, it's Farnesine, Limonene, and beta myrcene. If I read the information that's on the web, it's limonene, myrcene, and beta caryophylline. I'm going to go with what's in my package. Just because I'm feeling more of those candy notes, and, and I can definitely get the, 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 the earthiness of the myrcene, that's definitely there. Yeah, Purifier. Doing a nice job down in Penticton. Some interesting genetics, some unique genetics to them. And Bubba Purple Punchicle. Maybe a genetic you want to try. And as I am wont to do on occasion with Cultivar Corner, after I finish consuming and then just kind of let it roll around in the brain a little bit, having that THC being absorbed by all my CB1 receptors, <laughs> they are working overtime, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, just, just a really nice feed and just a nice high. Again, definitely leaning on the indica side. I've got those euphoric feelings, but I've also got that body relaxation, moving into more of a body stone, and I'm, I'm liking it. It's a nice change. We've done a number of sativas lately of Cultivar Corner. Nice to find our way back to a very tasty and effect-riddled indica. BC Black, Pure Fire, Bubba Purple Punchicle. You too can feel like this. Sharing stories about good weed while trying good weed. This is the Cannabis Podcast. And we go to mjbizdaily.com for our last story of the day. And this is on Canada's shrinking medical cannabis market. And could it offer some lessons for other nations? Canada's regulated medical cannabis market has dwindled significantly from its peak, declining well before recreational marijuana legalization in October 2018, and continuing that downward trend as adult use sales displace purchases through regulated medical channels. Experts say factors behind the medical market's decline include the convenience of shopping at adult use stores, challenges for doctors in authoring medical cannabis, a lack of tax advantages for medical cannabis clients and producers, THC potency limits that apply to both recreational and medical cannabis products. Those issues might offer lessons for other nations and jurisdictions that legalize medical marijuana first, followed by adult use legalization. In Canada, spending on medical cannabis products peaked about a year before recreational cannabis sales began, reaching $161 million in the fourth quarter of 2017, according to Stats Canada data. The most recent data shows medical marijuana sales totaled $109 million in the second quarter of 2022, after hitting a low of $104 million in the first quarter. Canadians wishing to access medical marijuana products such as dried cannabis, edibles, oils, or topicals through the government system require an authorization by a physician or nurse practitioner, allowing them to buy cannabis directly from licensed producers for mail delivery. Home medical cannabis cultivation is also permitted, as is sourcing supply from a designated grower. Only about 42,000 individuals produce medical cannabis for themselves or others at the end of 2021. In comparison, there were roughly 257,000 registrations to buy cannabis from a commercial producer. Several factors might explain why the Canadian medical marijuana market has declined from its 2017 peak. Ahead of recreational legalization in October 2018, Canada's medical cannabis patient population included both true medical users and some recreational users. Cannabis consultant Deepak Anand cited some other factors contributing to the Canadian marijuana market decline. Pre-recreational legalization, there were a number of challenges with respect to form factors. New forms of cannabis, including edibles, hit the market after adult use legalization, but medical marijuana products are subject to the same regulations as recreational cannabis, including THC limits on products such as edibles. 
Holding medical and recreational cannabis to the same standards with respect to putting on limits for high THC, for example, that is a mistake, Hanan said. He believes Canada has been so focused on recreational legalization that not only have patients been ignored, but also regulatory policy has been ignored to a large extent. And what we saw and what we're seeing is patients are going to the legacy or the illicit market to be able to access their product. Canada offers little in the way of preferential tax treatment for registered medical cannabis clients, although it does permit registered patients to claim medical marijuana expenses on their annual tax returns. Patients pay retail taxes on medical marijuana purchases, as they would at a recreational store, and producers pay the same excise tax as they do for adult use cannabis. Anand called for policy changes to get Canada's medical marijuana market growing again. Allowing pharmacies to be able to dispense medical cannabis is a no-brainer that should be immediate, he said. Eliminating tax should be another immediate step that we want to take, and eliminating potency limits. Canada's Federal Cannabis Act is currently under review, and the Canadian cannabis industry is hoping for reforms. The government lists the impact of legalization and regulation of cannabis on access to cannabis for medical purposes as one of its key themes for the review. Interesting story from mjbizdaily.com. And how has your experience been in the Canadian medical marijuana market? Have you seen the same decline that's been spoken about in this story? That's an interesting perspective. And as usual, let me thank you for being here. I really appreciate that you're listening to the podcast and that you support it. If you ever hear anything that you would like to comment on, please send a note to info at cannabispodcast.com. And if you would like to support the podcast more, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash cannabispodcast. Look at the options there. If you like what you hear and you feel so inclined, you can even buy me a doobie. That wraps it up for episode 112 of the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio, high above the Okanagan Valley, this was the Cannabis Podcast. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. Hey there, my name is Leah Babrudi, and I'm the founder and host of Canna Chicks Podcast, where I discuss cannabis, psychedelics, and other natural medicines. I not only interview people who use them as treatment for different conditions, but also the entrepreneurs who share their knowledge on how they built their businesses. If this sounds interesting to you, give my show a listen. I'm sure you'll learn something that'll surprise you.